Okay, we know that Excel can do regression. What do I mean by that? We, I have this truncated data set from Kaggle. Essentially, it's looking at sell, selling price of the house based to the lot area, the quality of the house, the condition of the house, and the year built. Okay. So for example, I can do linear regression in this way. I can actually say that the, the sale price of the house is actually equals to a certain variable, which is, we call it um, beta 1, B1, of the lot area plus beta 0. Okay. So I can use Excel to find out what is the B1 and B0, beta 1 and beta 0. It's actually quite simple. So beta 1 is essentially the slope. So I can use a slope function to find the known y, y is sales price, and known x, which is a lot. So this gives me the coefficient, what is what beta 1 is. And then beta 0, okay, let me move this aside, move this aside. So this is beta 1, this is beta 0. Okay. So beta 0 is actually the y-intercept. Is y equals mx, mx plus c, just that your m now becomes beta 1, your c becomes beta 0. So this is, the beta 0 is the intercept. Okay. Your known y is 0. And there you have it. You have these two coefficients to fit inside here. However, when we have multiple variables, for example, can I actually include con quality, condition, and year built? In, that, in other words, can I actually expand this equation to look something like this? I want beta 2 of quality plus beta 3 of condition. Plus beta 4 of year built plus beta 0. Okay, let me just correct my error here. Can I actually generate this equation? Oops. Okay, so let me just highlight it. If let's say this is the equation that I want. Um, this is the equation that I want. Can I actually do that? In, in itself, Excel cannot do it for me. Okay. However, I can use a function in Excel called the solver to do this. So let me just try out how does it work. Okay. So I just put this to be 0 0.1. So we, we put it to 0 0.1 first. Doesn't matter. And what we do is, what is beta 2? We just put beta 2, beta 3, and beta 4, then beta 0. Okay. Now, we actually assign beta 2, beta 3, beta 4, beta 0 to just a random number, 0 0.1. Okay. Just a starting number. So what we want is, can we actually use this to predict? So we start off with a predicted price predicted sales price. Okay. So I reconstruct this equation into a predicted sales price. So let's say I take this, I add a P in front. Can I actually construct this equation out using these values? I can. What I will do is I'll just type in the equation. Multiply by but however, if you realize that if it's 0 0.1 multiplied by lot value, that means the lot value, the lot area will be one tenth of it. But if I go down, you realize that it actually moves. So how do I lock the value for all the subsequent data points into just using this cell? I can do that by just um, locking the cells using dollar sign. So if I do that, you see 
my sales price is now one tenth of my lot area, which is doesn't make a lot of sense, but it doesn't make, it's okay. So I continue with the rest of my equation. Okay. Multiply by quality, then I go back and I continue doing the same until I generate the whole equation. Okay. So if your equation is very long, yes, you have a lot to type. Okay, you you adjust a little bit more. Last this. Okay. What do I have? Okay. Then now, if you can see that the sales price and the predicted sales price, the P sales price, is very different. Is quite very different. Okay. So what we want is to generate, so we call this four as the regressors. So I highlight the regressors in, let's say in green. The yellow is my actual price. And then this is, let's say I highlight in blue. Okay. All right. So what I need to do now is I have to generate another column, basically looking at what is the error between my predicted sales price and my actual sales price. Okay, so this actual sales price. So I, in order to make my life easier, I call this square of error. Okay, because if you don't square the error, you have negative numbers. Okay. So what we do is just square this minus this and we square it. Yes, it's going to give us a very big number. Oops, okay, but it doesn't matter. Giant number, it's fine. Okay. So this square error is something that we do not want to highlight. After which, I want to sum up this sum of square errors. So this is what I call as SSE, sum of square errors. So sum of square errors is just here. And I want to say that I want to find my Pearson's correlation. So just that correlation. So using the correlation function, I can find the Pearson's correlation between my sales price and my predicted sales price. Okay, now it's pretty bad. And because the error is so huge, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So essentially what the solver does is, can I actually play around with these coefficients? That means beta one to beta one, beta two, beta three, beta four, and beta zero, so that I reduce the sum of square error. I minimize the sum of square errors. So this is, what I want to reduce, okay? So I highlight maybe in a different color, I highlight this in blue. I want to reduce this. I want to change this value so that I, the sum of square errors becomes the lowest. Okay. So let me just do it. Okay, I will launch the solver. So solver is I set the value, I set the objective value to my sum of square error. I want to minimize it. I want to reduce it. Okay. By changing what? By changing which cells. It actually asked me to change which cells in order to minimize it. I change these cells. Okay. And then what I do is I just click solve. Okay. Is there a problem with the equation? No, uh, sorry. It's just one cell. So I highlighted, just not highlighted twice. So I just click solve. And it will generate, run through the system. And it will actually generate a value. Okay. So this may not be the best value. In fact, you'll see your sum of square errors is still pretty huge. Okay. But it's a, a bit better than nothing. It's getting closer. Okay. Just now, our correlation is from 0 0.2, now it's 0 0.3. So we can repeat it a few times. 
we solve it again. Okay, so let us look at the data. Ah, now you see it's 0 0.7. It's actually not bad, 0 0.75. So you see, it has reduced the sum of square errors. So at least what we know is we can probably keep these values. Okay, we, You can actually do it a few times until you get the lowest sum of square errors. It will, every time when it does it, it will regenerate a different number. So based on this, you can actually say that this is beta 1, the lot for the lot area. Beta 2 is the quality. Condition of the house may not be that important because it may be subsumed into the quality of the house already. The year built may be quite important. Okay. So at least now we can use a reduced version to start to predict the house selling price by based on the lot, the condition, and the year built. Okay. So if I were to rewrite this equation, I will rewrite my equation in this way. I'll rewrite my equation that the sales price can be predicted by beta 1, which is let's say 1.8. 1.8, um, let's give you three significant figures 1.82. Um, my beta 2 is 1.61. 87.22. So I just have it to do decimal place. Quality condition may not be that useful, so I remove that. Year built will be important. Year built is 32.2. Okay, and there is no there's no um y intercept anymore. There's no beta zero. So this becomes my regression. Um basically my regression formula. So this is actually how you can do multiple regression in Excel. It's actually not too difficult, just that you have to try a few rounds until you get the best answer that you can think of okay, by reducing the sum of square errors. Of course, you can do it for the entire day and see which is the best combination of these values you get so that you get the least sum of square error and the highest correlation. It just doesn't optimize both at the same time. Okay, so that's all for today.